Today we're looking at Photoshop's main competitor, Affinity Photo. Specifically, I'll be showing you a feature that doesn't even exist in Photoshop, Live Filters. And so if you've been thinking that Affinity Photo is like Photoshop Lite, Live Filters are a legitimate heavyweight. I'll start with a look at the basic filtering experience as we've known it for years here inside Photoshop. That's where I'm going to start. And then we'll see the frankly much improved experience inside Affinity Photo. And so I've got a bunch of layers here inside the layers panel. Let's say I naively think I'd like to filter the entire stack. The top layer is selected, and so I'll go to the filter menu, which is where all the filters reside, and I'll choose one of them. Doesn't matter which one, because it's going to fail. And that's because, as a rule, filters expect pixels. This layer is not made of pixels. It contains a vector-based shape, and so Photoshop will thoughtfully offer to convert it to a non-destructive smart object, or you can convert it to pixels, which is rasterized right here, or you can cancel out. I'm going to cancel because it dawns on me, wait a second, Photoshop doesn't let you filter an entire stack the way Affinity Photo does very easily, by the way. You have to select a specific item inside the Layers panel. I'll select the Smart Object, which, by the way, does contain multiple layers. That's fine. And then I'll return to the Filter menu and choose that same filter. It's crystallized, by the way, just for the sake of demonstration. It creates this pretty geometric pattern. Some of you may be aware of this filter. You may also think to yourself, you know, I do remember it. I've never actually used it or anything, but still, we've got this one cell size value. It's measured in pixels. You may wonder what in the world's going on with it. It's not the size of one of these cells, by the way. It's the maximum distance between any two points in a Voronoi diagram. For what it's worth, just in case you were curious. Anyway, more importantly than the fact that we have this one option, and it's going to behave the same way inside Affinity, is that we can't preview it across the entire document. Some filters do. This one does not. It just previews inside the dialog box. So you've got to click OK in order to apply it. And then let's say you think to yourself, well, gosh, I want to blend it, right? Well, thankfully, you are working with a smart object. And so it's an editable smart filter, which means you have only to double click on the slider icon right here to bring up a second dialog box, remember that, at which point I'll apply the hard light blend mode and I end up with this very pretty pattern right here. Sudden screen change. We are now inside Affinity Photo looking at those same layers here inside the layers panel, starting with that vector based shape layer up here at the top of the stack. Now out of habit, you may figure you go to the filters menu. That's fine, but these are the static filters, the ones that permanently affect pixels on a layer by layer basis just as we've come to expect from Photoshop, but you're not in Photoshop anymore. You deserve better and you get better by going down to this little hourglass icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Notice it reads live filters. Now, before I absolutely knock your socks off, don't you think this would be a great time to take a moment and subscribe because I'm about to pass along things you aren't going to see anywhere else, including, hey, Voronoi, named after the 19th century Ukrainian mathematician who came up with the whole crystallized concept. Now, at first, you're not going to believe me because this doesn't look right at all. However, that's because, notice right here, there's the filter, the Voronoi filter. It's the live filter. And so I accidentally applied it to the vector-based shape layer, but it doesn't matter because who didn't get mad at me? Affinity Photo did not get mad. It didn't bring up an alert message. It didn't tell me anything was wrong. It's just like, yeah, that's what you want to do brother. Go for it. Anyway, I'm going to drag this up to stack. Now it affects everything below it. Notice that. I'll turn it off for a second and then I'll turn it back on and, and, and it's totally dynamic and it works just like some kind of crazy adjustment layer that does not and has not ever existed inside Photoshop, despite the fact, and I don't mean to abash Adobe, I love Adobe, but despite the fact that people have been asking for this very feature for years now, and notice I can now go to this just delightfully non-modal dialog box that's just going to hang out here and let me do whatever I want. Notice, I can drag this guy down below my name so it's not affected anymore or below all the text so the text on the circle is not affected and I could drag it onto a layer in order to clip it if I want to. This is a layer group, by the way. Nothing special about it. These are pixel-based layers, no smart object, nothing like it. I'll drag this guy back up right here and I could even say, you know, I miss my home world. 
world. I'll go ahead and name this guy Crystallize. Why don't I? And so all this can happen while the dialog box is up on screen. Then I could say, hey, cell size right there. I want to take it down to 40. Use the scroll wheel on my mouse. That's possible. Also, you can use the arrow keys as you would inside Photoshop. Then we have this line width value, which controls the stroke between the panes, P-A-N-E-S, just like that stained glass filter that's part of the filter gallery in Photoshop. What kind of chicanery is that? Photoshop has two filters, crystallized and stained glass, that use the same exact technology. Anyway, uh, they bought it in an acquisition a long time ago, but I'm going to take this line width value down because we don't want it. And you might say at this point, hey, smart guy you think you got the goods well what about that blend mode you assigned well you don't have to bring up a separate dialog box you can just apply it it's right there so you know how the blend options dialog box sometimes takes two or three seconds to come up on screen best case scenario no no worries here just apply hard light and an opacity value and they're also available because this is an independent layer up here at the top of the layers panel and so once you're like gosh you know what i think i'm sort of sick and tired of seeing this unobtrusive dialog box right here i'll go ahead and close it well now of course you could get rid of the layer just by pressing the delete key if you want to bring it back by undoing you could click on this little icon to bring back the dialog box and then change the cell size value as much as you want now i've got a lot more coming because there's so much to this topic don't want to lose you but i would be remiss if i didn't mention that the full version of affinity photo is currently available as a free trial so check that out hey real quick as things stand now, Affinity Photo offers not one, not two, but 35 live filters. Want to see a few more, including a couple of my absolute favorites? Then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknap. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this base image right here, a bunch of layers, of course, as before, and I'm going to turn it into this effect using a combination of four more mainstream filters if you will and so i'll go ahead and select this guy now let's say i want to apply gaussian blur on top of this entire filter stack in order to increase the contrast of the image and give it a little you know bounce a little soft bounce and so i don't want to apply gaussian blur to the top layer to the selected layer right here and so what I'm going to do is go to the select menu and choose deselect layers. That's one way to work. And that will deselect all the layers. So those of you who like to do that kind of stuff in Photoshop, there it is. On the Mac, apparently, you can just click in this empty area down below. Then I'll click on the hourglass icon down at the bottom of the panel. And I'll choose Gaussian Blur from the top of the list. And I want you to see now that... Every one of these filters, you can do something by dragging inside the image window. So where Gaussian blur is concerned, if I drag in the image window, I change the amount of blur. So it's kind of gimmicky in the case of this filter. Other filters are more practical. We'll see. But what I want to do is take this down, let's say, to 20 pixels. I want to show you something, though notice if you will go ahead and zoom out here that we have this kind of halo transparent halo around the entire image we don't want that and so you you might figure you'd, you'd have to crop it away but what you actually do in this software is turn on preserve alpha and that will take care of that problem entirely and now i'll take the opacity value down to 50 percent and i'll change the blend mode to overlay like so and now as you can see if i turn off the layer which is independent up here at the top of the stack then and then turn it back on we get a little bit of a bounce as i was saying anyway i'm going to turn it off just for now so i can show you another filter that's a really useful filter in photoshop however it's handled better in this software i'll click on the icon once again on the hourglass and i'll choose radial blur now in photoshop you get not only a radial option but you also get zoom zoom's a separate filter in this software and it's static by the way but with radial if you want to change the angle you don't drag inside the image window for that if you want to change the angle then we get a whole lot of blur going on if you don't want these reveals going on in the corners then turn on preserve alpha in that grade and now you can actually drag the center point in the image window wouldn't you love it if you could do that in photoshop instead of working inside that weird little thing inside the dialog box anyway 
I'm going to change this to, let's say, 50%. Here's the problem. My, my center point is now off. I don't want it to be over there. And so I would figure click reset. I just want to show you this software is by no means perfect. Click reset. It resets the value, which doesn't really serve any purpose. And now I increase the value again. The, the center point is still wrong. It's still offset. And so reset should recenter the effect. I, I can do, I can change this value to a zero on my own. Thank you very much. So anyway, there's something that could be uh, fixed uh, as it were. I'm going to now, however, bring up my guides. So guides you can bring up just as you can inside Photoshop by pressing control or command semicolon, if you know that trick. But anyway, you can just click to set the center as well and then drag it around. I'm going to take this guy this filter that's sitting up here and notice if i turn it off for a second you can see that i've got this ring inside of my seal it's a little bit literal don't you think i i want it to be a little bit more of a kind of like vague and so i'm going to drag radial blur and drop it onto that ring layer and then it's clipped to that layer and then i'll turn it back on i turn it off so we can't tell so i'll go ahead and expand the layer like so and then turn it back on so you can expand layers they don't have to be groups like this guy down well in the other image actually is where it was anyway now i can click or i can drag to change the center point so very very handy as I say, the zoom functions in a different filter that is static. Now, what I want to do is play with the rocks right here. So I'll go ahead and click on that layer and I'll turn off the guides and I will apply a couple of different filters. I'll click on the hourglass and I'll choose ripple. So everybody, right, when you when you first start using Photoshop, it's so fun playing with Ripple, right? And then you realize that really it's not a very flexible filter. But here, you can't change its size. You can change the Ripple size in Photoshop. You have three options here. You can just change the intensity. Uh, but you can also drag the center point around to wherever you like it. So that's handy. And then I could just click in the center of this thing right there in order to reset it. And preserve alpha, I'm gonna turn that on, but I want you to see right now we've got these bits of, of transparency in the form of the checkerboard pattern. If I turn on preserve alpha, this is all I see is black. I can't get it to be any color other than black, by the way. It doesn't hinge on the foreground color, in other words. And so if I wanna drop out that black though, I could change the blend mode to lighten and those black edges will go away. All right, and now I'll just go ahead and set this, let's say to 60, as an intensity should work out uh, pretty nicely. And I'm going to add another filter. Actually, I'm gonna take this guy off, this filter right here. So every single one of these live filters has a different icon. They're all unique icons, that is to say. I'm gonna just drag this guy up so it's sitting right there on top of rocks. If you will, let me hide ring. Nope, I accidentally dragged it into ring. So you gotta kind of watch that a little bit. Did you see how it got unindented? Can be tricky, actually, gotta say. And so now what I'm gonna do is, is actually I'll leave ripple selected. So I put the new layer on top of it, click on the hourglass and choose uh, another distortion filter, lens distortion this time around, which you could use to remove actual lens distortion, of course. It's a corrective filter. I'm going to use it, however, as an effect filter. So I'm gonna take it up to 60%, I believe is what we're doing this time around. And then I don't want this ring to be exposed down here, so I'll just go ahead and drag the effect. And notice that gives you just this crazy amount of control. Is that not fun to even look at? Imagine how much fun it is to do on your own. Anyway, I'm going to drag down until that ring disappears. And we're just seeing the ring shadow like so. I'll hide that dialog box. I'll turn Gaussian blur back on. And if you want to get a sense for before and after, in Photoshop, you just do a revert. There's not a revert in this software as things stand now. Bring up the history panel. And you've got this slider, so you could just slide back to the beginning of the process. There it is. And then just slide back to the end. So there's your before after. What do you think? Comment below. Not to mention like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. For still more live filters, along with some great ways to use them, go to patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This 
is Deke now.